All right, proof of no once saved. Let's think about this for a second. So I read in the Bible, I Google it, where in the Bible does it talk about Christ and grace and stuff like that? And there's a, there's a scripture talking about how Christ gives grace in portions or whatever, okay? Uh, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and try to rightly divide that, but I want to point something out here. People out here that say that there's a once saved, what will they say? They will say, they will try to use those scriptures talking about how somebody never knew God in the first place or never had God in the first place. That's what they will say, won't they? So if a person can fall from grace and the Bible says a person can fall from grace, then how could they have fallen from grace when you didn't have grace when you were evil at youth? You didn't have the Holy Spirit when you were evil at youth. That you had to come to Christ, and I, I may not have the best answer how to come to Christ, but I think I have a better answer than the majority of people out here. I'm not going to sit here and tell people that all you have to do is... Uh, believe and nanosecond later you're saved or tell someone that you can ask Christ into your life then that's going to work because it all depends on how you really are if you have any intentions of allowing the Holy Spirit to even work in your life in the first place the Holy Spirit's not going to work in a person's life that's living a life of sin I forgot to log out I need to log out on my truck uh, think about this if if you think I'm wrong with basically the, the whole moral of this video is one scripture in the Bible and I know exactly what people are going to say that this is a works-based salvation and you know what I would probably 100 million percent agree with these people how can you fall from grace if you decide that somebody convinces you somehow that you have to keep the law. It says that if you have to keep, if, if someone thinks that they have to keep the law, that they fall from God's grace. Is that not in the Bible? Is that not in the Bible? So how did they have God's grace and have the Holy Spirit if they were not saved or being saved and didn't have Christ and was it not right with God at once, at one time? So how could you fall from God's grace, something you didn't have when you were evil at youth, and some of y'all are still evil at youth, and some of y'all are st still evil as a grown-up? How could you fall from God's grace if you didn't already have the Holy Spirit? Because, yes, it is Christ where you get the grace. But the power comes through the Holy Spirit. And for, for a person out here to have the Holy Spirit, you have Christ. Just like Romans 8 9 says. Go read it if you don't know the scripture I'm talking about. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have Christ. So basically, at the end of the day, when somebody lost grace because they thought they had to keep the law, and nobody out here, you can't prove to me that everybody out here that has come to Christ at first thought that they were being, sa they were being saved because they were doing something. Look at all the people out here. I saw a person the other day on a TikTok video sit here and tell me that I had to keep the law. And I sit here and said, it depends on what you're talking about. Think about this for a second. In the Old Testament, it says, statutes, commandments, laws. So, are the Ten Commandments actually laws? Well, when I first started making videos and I was saying that you had to keep the law, that was what I was talking about. But when I read that it says, laws, statutes, and commandments... They're separated from each other. The law is talking about the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments is talking about the commandments and statutes. I may not know what statutes is, but I know that you have to keep the Ten Commandments. 
But you get what I'm pointing at? If you, th I mean, are you telling me that if that if you think I'm wrong with this video, that everybody that has come to Christ that thought that they all of a sudden, that that if right now, if if I fell from God's grace, how would you ever get it in the first place if you thought you had to keep the law? How would God have ever given you? His grace, if he thought you had to keep the law of Moses, if you thought you had to keep the law of Moses, you would have never gotten the Holy Spirit in the first place. You would have never had grace and you'd have never had Christ and you'd never been of God. So how can you fall from that? And, 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 if, and if that's what these people are going to sit here and say that these people never had Christ and, and, and God, because I know exactly what scripture they're talking about. If I recall, it's in the book of John. That's not true. Because how did they get it in the first place? How did they get God's grace in the first place? To fall from his grace. And there are a lot of people out here convinced people over time that, I mean, think about this. I'm telling you this right now. I would, put, I would bank everything everything in this life I would bank everything in this life you guys have never been convicted about keeping the Sabbath I have never been convicted since I've been baptized by the Holy Spirit that I had that I had that I should not eat pork I've never been convicted about the Sabbath if you want somebody out here to make you feel like and you want to think that that, that people out here are making you feel convicted Conviction comes from God. It doesn't come from man. If you, if somebody sits there and says, you know what you've been doing is wrong and you start feeling bad, that's a guilt trip. That's a guilty conscience. That ain't conviction. I don't care. This message right here isn't conviction. How could somebody fall from God's grace if they didn't already have the Holy Spirit? and didn't have Christ in them and weren't of God. You backslide, you fall away and you go apostate again. All you have to do is Google backslide and look, up, look it up in Wikipedia there. See what it says, that these people went back into sin and I'm telling you, every every instance of anybody ever using the word backslide that I've heard people use backslide before, all were referring to going back and doing things that they weren't supposed to do, that they had changed their life and they went back. Unbelievable that this whole time, for months, maybe a year or so now, I've used backslide, apostate, and fall away. All three of them. And if you just Google backslide in Wikipedia, you'll see all three of them there. I didn't even do that till like just last week or the week before that. So if you can fall from God's grace, you had the Holy Spirit beforehand. And you did not have the Holy Spirit. You may... You may have been convicted as a child when you first started living in sin, doing sinful things, and you may still get convicted today. But if you've never truly devoted your life to Christ, submitted, what's that other word? Surrender, surrender. I mean, what, what about the Pharisee, this girl that's a Pharisee out here saying you don't have to submit? And it does say you have to submit. How much, how much people have submitted is on them. They fell back into sin and this stuff is in the Bible. This stuff is in the Bible, these examples of these people that were right with God and are no longer right with God. And I've even given credit time and time again. I've made videos here on YouTube time and time and time and time and time and time and time again that I've sit here and said that I give people credit out here for one time that we're living for God. Yes, I do. Yes, I do.
So yes, you can lose salvation. There's already proof right there. But you can't sit here and say, well, the reason why is because of works-based salvation. That's not the point. The point is the majority of the majority of the time, these people would also sit here and say, these people never had, they were never of God in the first place. Here's some other stuff I got for you. You know, people say faith alone in Christ alone. First, it was faith alone. And I start, I start checking on it. Find out the Bible says it's not faith alone. God debunks people out here. And then I start hearing faith alone through Christ alone. And all that is, is a near tickler. Because you may, if you, if you think about faith alone and then you think about Christ alone, that's an ear tickler. Let me ask you, where in the Bible does it say Christ alone? I'm not trying to put the words Christ alone down. Where in the Bible does it say Christ alone? It doesn't say it. Just like I'm a sinner in need of a savior doesn't say that there. And, 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 and asking Christ into your life, into your heart. How many times have you heard that? Is that in the Bible? I even watched Ray Comfort made a video. Ray Comfort here on YouTube made a video uh, where he was talking to a guy and he said that this is a thing that people have over time generated, basically generated. It's kind of like saying, uh, well, like I said, a sinner in need of a savior. Who came up with that? Man did, didn't they? But can you see how it how how you could not how you could sit here and say it and not really mean it? You listen to people out here say you can't lose salvation once you get it. Then they say a nanosecond later you're saved after you start believing. Here, since I've been making a lot of videos on TikTok, and this is for people also on YouTube land. Here I've got a I've got a um, where's my Bible. I've got a perfect, I've, I've got the perfect thing right here. I've talked against man's word, but I do like study sections of certain Bibles. I mean, I've only seen a couple of study sections of Bibles, so, and they've both been King James. People are still going to deny this and they're at the end of the day. And I know they are. I've sit here and said, believe is tied with obey. Right here. If you watch some of my other older videos, if anybody is still watching my videos that has been watching my videos for any length of time, about uh, six months or a year ago, I sit here and said, Abraham was the prime example. Abraham was the prime example because truly what God wanted out of people, Abraham did. The only thing you don't, the only thing you don't get that Abraham did is lived in sin and that he had to repent and stuff. That's the only thing, but David did. And, I, and, and I've even admitted how David was a prime example. Job was a prime example. These people walked upright. Um, who else? Christ, upright. God, upright. Yeah. Here it is. The illustration of Abraham. It's in the book of James. Was not Abraham our father? And I almost want to cry because this is... You, you guys think that this doesn't mean anything? Was not Abraham our father justified by works... When he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him, unto him righteousness. And he called, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works... A man is justified and not by faith only. So here you go. You already got your liars out here. Lie, your ear ticklers. This is an ear tickling message that these people are out here preaching. Faith alone. It never, even if you put Christ alone on there with it, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a falsehood. 
Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. And if I recall, it's because like I said, I already made a video on this, but for some reason, TikTok, it, my videos are not getting the full length. You're supposed to be able to record a 60 minute vid under a 60 minute video and be able to upload it. So I'm going to start making my videos back here on YouTube and tell them to come over to my channel here. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Okay, so the, I know people. I know people that 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 talk against works. They absolutely hate these scriptures. I don't understand why. I don't understand why that work that uh, once saved always saved hate these scriptures. I don't understand why they want to point out this. We're saved by grace scripture. And, but they don't want to point out other scriptures. Hey, that's your fault. That's your bad. At the end of the day, if that's you, that's your bad. Right here in the study section, James points to the example of Abraham. In the past, I've said that there's a scripture right there. I think it's in Genesis is where it talks about Abraham obeying. There's another scripture in that same book of the Bible that says Abraham obeyed. James points to the example of Abraham who obeyed out of trust and belief. Trust and belief. Isn't that the same stuff that people talk about Christ? In the beginning of Abraham's narrative, he showed that he trusted God. His faith was made perfect as opposed to hollow faith as a result of obedience. Even the prostitute Rahab acted in obedience that resulted from trust and belief. And then it gives you scripture, John Joshua 2, 4 through 21, 6, 22 through 25. Christians can find narratives throughout the Old Testament of people demonstrating that genuine faith is always accompanied by obedient actions. Okay, so I keep on hearing people say, that once you give your life to Christ, that these things start happening. Well, in the first place, if a person's not willing to turn to God, and you're not turning to God by being in sin, when sin separates you from God, who whoever sit here and said that you don't that you don't have to obey and you don't have to repent, repent unto salvation. That means the salvation process has to have repentance along with it. The, the very word Christians absolutely cannot stand. Oh no, they can't. They cannot stand it. You do have to repent. It's not what saves you, but are you saved without it? Hey, Jesus Christ, what did you say about repentance? Oh, that's right. Repent or likewise perish. Thank you, sir. You sure did. It's not what saves you, but are you saved without it? So there's more than one repentance. Four scriptures in the Bible. Think about this for a second. There's four scriptures. Turn from your ways and he will heal your land, correct? Humble yourself, turn from your ways and he will heal, heal your land. That's the shortest way of saying it. Um, the book of Ezekiel, to tell them to turn from their ways. Joshua, I mean, Jeremiah, turn from your ways. Acts, turn from wickedness. Why would turn from wickedness? Wow, that's ringing a bell. That's ringing a bell. That's ringing a bell. Is that the same wicked that it's... it's I'm, I'm, I'm not saying all these scriptures word for word, correct? Is that the same... It, it, does it say wicked there when it says he'll heal your land? Or is it in Ezekiel when we're supposed to tell people to turn from their ways? Doesn't it say wicked in one of them? Huh? I'm thinking, it, I'm thinking it does. I'm thinking one of those says wicked. I'm thinking I'm thinking it does. But they, but people can use all these words out here, the finished work of Christ. What does that have anything to do? What does that have anything to do that if a person's not willing to turn from sin? 
You can give all these little things that, that some of this stuff is not even in the Bible. What They'll sit here and say, it is finished. I just heard somebody else talk about it as finished last night. I'm telling you right now, the majority of people believe in once saved. And when I found this website, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you a website if you will please look it up. The 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 article that I was looking up in the first place, the article I was looking up had absolutely nothing to do with what I read that I want you to read. The article I read that I want you to read absolutely has nothing to do with what I'm telling you right now in this video. I mean, the, the, the main reason why I looked up this site, because that's not what I was looking for. In the past, I've sit here and said that I've had paradigm shifts. Now, some people have uh, definitions of paradigm shifts of all kinds. I don't believe just in any paradigm shift out here. I don't. The paradigm shift I'm talking about is when I watched Sid Roth had a pastor on his video one day that said he had read the Bible multiple times and one day that the scripture was not the same way he had read it time and time again. I even looked up a paradigm shift one day. I Googled it and I found a pastor that said the same thing, that he had read the Bible time and time again and that he had witnessed scriptures that had completely changed. And I know what it is. It, when a person truly wants to know God, God will show these people what this stuff really means and a better, a, a better explanation to, to it too. A little easier to understand. Salvation far from the wicked and salvation is not granted to the wicked. Which one sounds a little bit, a, a little bit of more of a wake up? Just like God showed me, salvation is not granted to the wicked. Salvation is not as far from the wicked as the same. It doesn't make no difference. The outcome is if a person's in sin, there's no salvation granted to them. It said in sin. There's a difference. In sin, living in sin. There's a difference that a person sinning periodically and 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 having a godly sorrow to repent to not let this stuff reign in their life. There's a big difference here. There's an absolute big difference here. This is what I want you to look up. Paradigm shifts in the Bible the pastors have noticed. See, because I couldn't, I could not find it. If you go Google paradigm shifts right now, what are you going to find? COVID-19. That stuff wasn't even around. They didn't even have that when I went looking up paradigm shift. I may never find what I'm looking for if, if the very first thing you find is COVID-19 garbage. Garbage. I want you to I want you to Google what I just said. Paradigm shifts in the Bible, the pastors have noticed. Find the very top website. The very first website. Third paragraph down. Isn't a paragraph a little uh, area of words? It's been so many years. Forty six. I mean, give me a break. I dropped out when I was like in tenth grade or eleventh grade. I, I got good reading comprehension, though. I had, when I was in seventh or eighth grade, I had college reading comprehension. Uh, when uh, you look at the third paragraph down, read what it says. And I believe it 100%. It said that if you start following traditions of men, it will alter, warp. What did it say? How did it, it, I don't, I can't remember if it used the word regeneration. What I'm saying is, if you give your life to Christ and I see you one day, and it was a week ago, I walk up to you and uh, you start asking me about God and I say, well, you know, you don't have to worry about sin. God took it away. Past, present, future, a lie. You're going to be like, huh, really? And then you're going to hear somebody else say it. And then you're going to hear somebody else say it. And then you're going to hear somebody else say it. Okay, so we're still talking. I start preaching traditions of men because that's what it says there. Traditions of men. But don't think doctrines of demons won't do the same thing. 
Doctrines of demons and traditions of men are both things that people, uh, two groups that you can that you can look at the church out here as a part of traditions of men and doctrines of demons once saved as a doctrines of demons this traditions of men is like praising mary praising the pat i mean going into the pastor trying to get for forgiveness from a pastor um and you can't get from forgiveness from a pastor you can only get it forgiveness from god himself uh you can't get um you got your beads, you got your all this, traditions of men. We know that this is traditions of men. I'm telling you, doctrines of demons, I promise you, weren't saved as the doctrines of demons. Because what, at the end of the day, when you're in sin, you're welcoming demons into your life. When you're supposed to read the Bible and have the armor of God. Why have the armor of God that you say you have? You don't have. And you know what? Check this out. You know why Satan doesn't tempt these people as much? Because he already has them. I'm telling you the truth. The more you start living for God, what happens? The more you get kicked to the curb by, by Satan. Even if you do fight the temptation, yes, he'll flee and he'll come back. A lot of y'all out there ain't even witnessing this because you're not even living for God. And you don't even have the Holy Spirit. If you had God's grace, he would, it would teach you to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. So why would anybody even want to sit here and think about, hey, I can't go a day without sin. I can't go a week without sin. So I'm just going to sin whenever I want to sin because I believe in this falsehood uh, of once saved, the, true, the doctrines of demons. I promise you, you guys are altering your regeneration and renewal of the mind. I'm telling you. But hey, you have to have the ear to hear, and a lot of y'all aren't going to hear this. Again, how can somebody say that being snatched out has anything to do with free will? That doesn't. Free will, anybody can say, bye-bye, God, I'm going to go do what I want to do. And that's exactly where Christians are at right now, doing what they want to do. And that's not how it works because that's not submitting and that is not what's the other word surrendering so if a person wasn't truly willing to surrender when they asked christ into their life it was never going to work in the first place it was you could sit here and say i'm a sinner in need of a savior and if you were never willing to surrender in the first place it was never going to work And see, when you believe this stuff that's a lie, I can't give a whole bunch of examples. I can't. But I'm never going to sit here and believe Christ alone. Yeah, he's what gives you salvation. He is who gives you salvation. It's because of him. The blood of Christ. But only if those that come out of the darkness and into the light. Because the light and the darkness don't mix. You're in darkness when you're out here in sin. You're of the light when you've turned to him and you're living for him. And at the end of the day, it is going to be a heart thing. But where is a person's heart when they're out here in sin, when they're not supposed to, and they don't have the godly sorrow to repent? And what these doctrines of demons and traditions of men's are causing people not to have the godly sorrow to repent. You may think I'm just, I mean, like I've said before, I would put down every denomination if I knew what they were all based off and where, where they're full of garbage. I would literally, I would bring the light to all. I would, I would bring them down. I would, I would put every stinking one of them down. I only know of those two. I could say Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe in Christ being the savior of the world. 
And you know what that you know what's crazy at the end of the day? They'll try to play it off as they are. Same like Catholics. Oh, I'm not praising Mary. I'm not praising Mary. I'm not praising Mary. I'm not praising Mary. Hey, you want to hear something? You want to hear something? See if I can find it in the Bible. You want to hear something? It's in the book of Mark. I sit here and talked about in the past that God debunks people praising Mary. I'm going to prove it to you. And it was actually in the movie Luke when I heard uh, one of the disciples come up behind Christ and ask Christ something about Mary. And in, in the movie Luke, that three and a half hour movie narrated from the Bible where they talk Hebrew or uh, Aramaic or whatever it is, uh, Jesus turns around and kind of puts him in his place. Let me see if I can find it. I mean, I could tell you where it's at and you and you would see it. I may just have to tell you because I can tell you I'm not against Mary you guys can you guys got me wrong if you think I'm against Mary I'm just going to tell you how Jesus put it huh. thefts covetousness wickedness, deceit, lavishness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Well, there you go. Hey, from, from within the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, and murderers. Hallelujah. God is all truth. <laughs> and you get all this stuff. These people do not inherit the kingdom. It tells you in another place in the Bible, murder don't inherit the kingdom. Oh, yeah, you can always turn to God and ask for forgiveness. Turn from your ways. You can turn to God, turn from your ways, and ask God for forgiveness. And he'll forgive you. He sure will. But you're going to repent of it or you're not. Or he's not. God knows that tomorrow, if I'm going to ask for forgiveness today, and if tomorrow I'm going to go do it again. Okay. Here it is. I cannot find it. So I'm going to tell you what it is. Do you remember the little story? where Jesus started doing things and they started noticing and they were about to do something to Jesus and Mary and the brothers went thinking that they were going to be able to do something for Christ. You know what I'm talking about? The disciples said, your mother and brothers are outside. Y'all are my mother and brothers. Hey! Wait, 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 wait. So Jesus didn't stop what he was doing and go out and see Mary? Hmm? What does the Bible say? God is not no, uh, what's that word? He doesn't take favor over no one. Uh, you you guys know what I'm talking about. I think it starts with a P. Uh, oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. God does not find favor over me, over you. You over me. No one over no one. And that includes Mary. There's no one to the right side of Christ and there's no one to the left side of the of our heavenly Father. No one. So uh And the thing is, when Christ, you know, there there was nothing no more special about the disciples than you and I. It's the same thing.
for, I cannot remember that word. You guys know what I'm talking about. And like I said, I'm telling you this right now in the book of Isaiah, if God never changed and he, and he never has changed, sin will always separate a person from God. When Christ said, when it says that Christ is an advocate to the Father when we sin, that is a person that is turning their life to Christ and they are being forgiven of their sins, confessing, asking God for forgiveness and repentance of their sins. That is not a person that's going to live a life of sin. Because if they live a life of sin, habitual, hypocritical, unrepentant sin, they're lawless. Every one of us is lawless if we let our sin get the best of us. All of us, if we let it go back and take root, if we shipwreck ourselves, we're lawless. There's something that has done that to us. Better off not knowing the truth. I'm telling you, this is the truth. I may have forgot something a minute ago that I was going to talk about, but it's irrelevant. I'm telling you right now, disobedient is unbelief, which is faithlessness. If we're saved by grace through faith, 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 but yet we choose to be disobedient to God, and there's many of things that are asked from us, deny self, fight the temptation, and crucify the flesh. Now... I'm going to pull this I'm going to pull this Bible back up again and I'm going to show you where Paul abstained from sin. And even I know for a fact denying self crucifying the flesh and fighting the temptation. I don't think fighting the temptation that's in one of his books. I think that's in the book of James or something. But I'm almost 100% sure that denying self or crucifying the flesh is in one of his books. In one of his books. When everybody wants to talk about Paul, 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 this, Paul, that, Paul, this, Paul, that. Yeah. Come out of the darkness and into the light. That's what Christ wanted us to do. So, Ephesians 2, 3. At one time, Paul was a child of wrath. So were you and I. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Even as others. So why is he no longer a child of wrath? I'm telling you this right now. It's because he's not doing the things he was doing once before. I mean, don't you think that it was on Paul's mind for the rest of his life for the, the things that he had done to Christians? I'm sure it wasn't just Christians he probably murdered or whatever. Um, but don't you think that was on his mind for the rest of his life? Don't you think he probably didn't get tempted here and there to do something like that? What did he do? Fight it. If there was lust of the flesh and any other thing, don't you think what he did? Especially when he is, the, it sounds like to me that he, that I'm telling you this right now. This is what I said on TikTok, but like I said, for some reason, it would never upload no more 60-minute videos or whatever. Christ had a message. John had a message. Mark, Luke, all these people had a message. Do you know their message was just as equal as Christ? Paul's message was just as equal as Christ. Since it's God breathed and the word made flesh that dwelt among us is Christ. They do not trump John. John's message is just as relevant as James's message. James's message is just as relevant as Paul's message. And all their messages were just as relevant than Christ's message. And what did John say about sin? 
and it never changed. Because there's no way in the New Testament that there would be a message that if a person remains in sin, that there are their father, the devil, and then here's Christ got a message, and then here's Paul got a message, and -and so-and-so's got a message, and they all got a different message. Nope. John's message is just as equal as Christ himself. And you can get mad all you want from for hear, hearing me say that. There ain't no blasphemy in the truth. And there's a whole bunch of scriptures in the book of John talking about sin. And where people are not rightly dividing and saying that these people never had God in the first place. One of those scriptures, if I recall, is in the book of John. But how can you backslide, go apostate, and fall away if you weren't before? And then how can you fall from God's grace again if you all of a sudden decided that you had to follow the law? And there are a lot of people out here preaching that. People are gullible. Gullible is all get out. Manipulated is all get out. Right now in this world with politics, as gullible as all get out. And I can see through all of it. You know, yesterday I said a cuss word. Do you know it? Right after I said a cuss word, I knew I did. Do you know I knew it? I did. I did wrong. I knew I did wrong right after I said the cuss word because God's trying to get me back on track. And how can people be on track when they're out here, when the cuss word's probably the least of anything that a person could do that God would look at? I mean, every, all these people sit here and say, all oh, sin's the same. If all sin's the same, then why is some some sins con- covered under love? Why do these sins co- that send you, that you don't inherit the kingdom if you're a fornicator, adulterer, idolater, a drunkard, a murderer, whatever? Yeah. People have been lying long enough. Christ did not take your present and future sins, and it doesn't tell you that in the Bible. That's no more than sitting here saying, faith alone through Christ alone. It's a bunch of garbage that man used. Man and woman. It's a bunch of garbage. Because I mean it. I did tell God when I was in New Mexico I never wanted to sin and I asked him to take it away but he can't do it for me if he won't do it for you just because you've never thought about it just like a lot of people have never asked God to show them something that's why I brought it up in the first place at first technically it was not so people would believe me all I wanted to do is for people to witness it for themselves and then there has been times I was like you know what maybe they would believe me If you ask God to show you something, all of a sudden he started doing supernatural things for you, you'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, well, believing doesn't mean anything if you're not willing to turn to God and you're not turning to God if you're living in a life of sin. And if you're not willing to turn from your sin, you're not submitting or you're not, what's the other word? Surrendering. I sit here, there's a girl the other day on a TikTok video. She said she was about 99% surrendered. She knew she was still just off a little bit. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm about two to three to four to five percent. What are you kidding me? Where's everybody at when they're out here in the life of sin? Just about as equivalent to me. Well, uh, again, Christ saying he never knew someone did not all have to do with a person that was thinking that they were saving themselves. That's talking about also people out here that 
the world does not know him and he will not know the world back if you're out here doing worldly things he will not know you literally a girl on tiktok the other day said she had a vision or a dream she didn't say either one she said christ told her he not, he did not know her and i can just imagine what she incorporated and who she incorporated it from the church the building some of y'all people yep can't turn a truth into an, a lie and believe in a lie over the truth remember like i said there's repercussions for that that's got that's all i mean that's it, it's probably the worst thing a christian could ever do i've said it before and i'll say it again turn a truth into a lie you get a reprobate mind you believe in a lie over the truth you get a a delusion you don't like the truth you get a strong delusion now i need to shut up all a person has to do is turn from their wicked ways their sinful ways but if, uh, until people do that god ain't gonna do it I, I don't even believe in everybody out here that sits there and says that god's working sins out of them i can believe some people but i can't believe others I can believe how if somebody, if, if people are literally weeding out sin out of their life, I can see how God would do that. But if people think that God's going to take a lifetime to get rid of sins that lead to death, I don't think so. You got the wrong God. You know, I, I want to, I want to end this video on this. Somebody asked a comment earlier to someone else and I answered it and I probably should have not answered it. I probably should have not answered it at all. Let somebody else answer it. And I answered it as good as anybody in this on this planet could answer it. Talking about other denominations, and I've heard other people say this stuff too. I mean, but I did I did not miss a beat. I did not miss a beat at all. Nope. Other denominations out here. The Quran. I made a video yesterday, but come to find out it really didn't upload. Why do you not call God Allah? You know why I wouldn't call God Allah? I don't care if I lived, if I if, if I believe, if I had, if I was Aramaic, where I could speak it fluently. Why would I not call God Allah? Because if I went around saying Allah and all the people out here that believe upon the Quran listening to me, they would think we were talking about the same God. God did not create the Quran. It is not God breathed. There's very little message in the Quran about the Holy Spirit. Look how much of a message that's in the Bible about the Holy Spirit. I mean, we literally, if you compiled all the stuff about the Holy Spirit in, in the Bible, you would have whole chapters. The book of Romans, full of the Holy Spirit. The Quran has very little of the Holy Spirit. If I was sitting here saying all law to everyone, and somebody believed in the Quran, they would think I'm talking about the same God. But they don't believe that Christ is the Savior of the world. He's the in beginning. I can't go around saying Allah because you're going to think that I'm going to think that Jesus is just a prophet. If I recall, I think it does say a prophet in the Bible. But he's the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. He's the I Am, the Alpha and the o Omega. So see how people can't say stuff out here? You got to watch how you say something. And I literally saw somebody admitting that God was all law. But what did Satan do in that book? What did Satan do to these people? What has Satan done to people all over the world with their religions? Somebody asked about religions. I said, Satan, and you guys have heard this is trying to copy God just like the Quran. The Quran sounds so close to the Bible, but at the end of the day, what was the most important message in the Bible? There's no other name. You want to say Yeshua? Say Yeshua. Yahushua? Say Yahushua. Jesus Christ? Yeah, there's no other name. So, what about all these other churches? 
Mount Volcano Gods in Hawaii. Buddha. The sixth the sixth arm woman. Yoga gar garbage. Who's behind all this? And I told this person Satan was behind all this. If it'll get people off a track on the wrong path, the wide path, the broad path to destruction, no more than the churches right here in America and abroad with their falsehoods. I don't know about all these denominations, but I've heard enough about them. It's all about Jesus Christ and it's all about God and the Holy Spirit. You want to, again, how would Jeff say this? How would Jeff tell someone to have a relationship with God? I would start out in the book of Proverbs. You want to learn how to fear God. It doesn't make no difference. Some people say Revelation. Somebody else say something else. Start in the book of Proverbs. Fear God. Wisdom and knowledge of understanding. Then read the rest of the Bible. But you got to turn from your, you got to turn to him. And you got to turn from your ways. Because you haven't turned to him if you're in your ways. I wouldn't probably say that because, I mean, you, you it, it don't make no difference. I mean, it, at least I'm not leaving something out. Turn to God, turn from your ways. And if you have any intent to turn from your ways, then the Holy Spirit will do something. God will do something and Christ will do something. If not, like I said, you can say whatever you want. It ain't going to make a hill be, ain't going to make a difference in the world. And with Christians out here today, you hear their message. You might as well pull the plug out and let them drown out in the lake. Yeah, I think that's enough. I think that's enough. I do believe I think that's enough. My ears are ringing like crazy, but I think that's enough. I'm not missing anything, on, am I, God? Mm -mm -mm. But again, I'm not, I'm not against... I'm just against people saying things that are not in the Bible. Christ alone, like I said, that's an ear tickling message. It really is. Get mad. It's an ear tickling message. You can add any, just about anything along with Christ alone, and people will be like, what? 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 Really? <laughs> nothing to be funny about yeah I'm done with this make sure and share this video